ToyTractorTimes.com is at the 2016 National Farm Toy Show with Adam Frericks from Virginia, Nebraska. Adam is uh, has a great display here. And, uh, what can you tell us about that? And congratulations on placing third in the uh, adult division in the small scale. Thanks a lot, Jason. So uh, just kind of overview of my display this year. It's just kind of a small cutout of what a farmyard would look like, trying to base it off of where I'm at in uh, southeast Nebraska. Um, Kind of just for the overview of it, the road would kind of be over here on this end, and then kind of back where Jason's at, showing the view. That's where the rest of the farmyard would be. Uh, I guess we can just kind of start on this end. Here okay. To walk through it. And over here we got a 9360R that was built by Nick McRell. Um, got spec cast tires on that, and 3D printing's really come a long ways with being able to get the wheel weights and uh, all that sort of stuff correct on it. I have to say this is probably the first time I've seen a 9360R yep. display. So 9360R, I worked on getting some decals <laughs> some decals made for it. Ertl hadn't produced those yet, so I, uh, I got the numbers made for it. And just something I kind of always wanted to be uh, different. Those small horsepower four-wheel drives are kind of the workhorses on farms in my area. We don't see a lot of the big you know, 500, 600 horsepower tractors there. Uh, that's pulling a... Uh, 50 foot Landall 9650 fuel cultivator that was built by Chris Putnam up in Canada that made it to the show just in the nick of time. I 3D printed the shanks for it and then also the front gauge wheels and then the tires and harrows or kits uh, from Denny Wagner for the tires and then the harrows were done by uh, Mini SK Farms on Shapeways. Chris did an awesome job getting that put together. Oh, it looks fantastic. It does full go up and down and everything. As you can imagine, it's a little fragile. So I'm just going to leave it unfolded for now. So sure. And then kind of moving on from there, I built this built this shed. Uh, this is kind of a steel building going for a baling building with the gray beams in there. All the beams are 3D printed. So the, the wall beams and then also the end walls. Um, it's got the... Uh, cover tin in here as well as the insulation up top. I used duct tape for the insulation. thought that worked pretty good to kind of give it that look. Sitting in the back here we got a 3D printed JM grain cart. This is a 1326 model. It's something that I've been working on. Still in the prototype stage a little bit, but uh, turning out pretty well so far. Sitting over from that, it's an S680 John Deere Combine. I went, I went ahead and put tracks on this one. So it's got my handrail kit. It's a complete repaint. Did some work to the uh, feeder house here. It's got the uh, slip slip guard on there. Like I said, everything's a complete repaint. All the plastic, auger, everything like that. It's got, it's got a circle C uh, topper on it to show the folding bin extension closed. Then that'll just come off. Then underneath the table here, I got uh, the rest of it. So then the unfolded extension goes on there. And then the, uh, the auger. The fill auger also had to be taken out because in real life that would fold down when the extension folds down. So That's great. I like how you cut the windows in there from uh, the way Ertl just has a standard. Yep, black. yeah, those windows are in there so the operator can see where we're at. Just because that bin sensor says it's full doesn't mean it actually is, right? Right. Or if you um, pack it down in there. Your rain uh, drops of corn coming down in, on your roof and you know it's full. Yep. So yeah, that's a S680 there. Next to that, I've got a Landall 7431 VT. Uh, this is kind of their prototype model, I guess. I saw at one point that they were going with double rolling baskets on the back, so that's becoming more and more popular uh, to give it that really smooth finish. This is a 29-foot model. Very nice. Next to that, we got the Doyle spreader. This is an eight-ton Doyle spreader that my brother Isaac drew up and designed. Did a good job on it. Pretty simple piece, but just one of those that kind of adds to the kind display. Like the tarp on it too. Yep, the tarp. We got the handle there on the back. The spinners are detailed in the bottom. You can see the chain floor. Kind of got that grating there. So this is a uh, S650 Bobcat. This was uh, designed by John Schomburg, and this is his prototype model. Just sitting on here. Pretty common item to have in a shop. It does raise and lower bucket dumps and everything so uh, that's just an awesome piece one of those little detail pieces that we didn't have before 3d printing that oh. proper 64 scale model it's changing everything yep here's the land all 5531 grain drill it's 30 foot uh, it does fold telescoping hitch will fold forward 
fold up and latch, and then it'll lift for transport. Kind of got to wedge it in between the tractor to get it to stand up. So these uh, the ladders and everything on here will go up and down. The lids do not come off. I've been told repeatedly. Maybe that was something I should have put on there, but uh, I think it turned out pretty well. It's pretty way. good to me. So pulling that's an 8120. This was built by Grant Peterson. This is a replica of the tractor that we have on our uh, real farm right now. So. It's got the two-wheel drive tires on the front. That's not very common anymore, but it works really well like for planning. I've seen a two-wheel drive on high horsepower out in the field. Yep, you bet. So that's a really nice piece. My grant, over here on this back wall, we've got uh, the pallet rack in here. This was designed by my brother as well. It was available on Shapeways. Um, they're customizable, the height, the spacing, and then obviously it comes all, all apart, so you can print it any color you want. Uh, lots of shops like to customize to, you know, deer or case or sometimes you just go with gray for the plane sure. plane there so I guess we'll come over on this side of the work area yep over here is kind of like the welding area this is a overhead crane hoist here it's a replica of the one that we've got we got in our shop my dad fabbed that up in real life so kind of needed one for the model model farm it's got the hoist on there moves in and out trolley so, and underneath there we've got a lot of accessories by uh, back 40 scale models and Chris Delva my brother did the welding table and everything like that as well but just kind of a new new modern shop not overly dirty or anything but uh, it's what they used to get the job done I like all the accessories of yep Jensen uh, shovel scoop shovel brush broom grain shovel uh, 55 gallon drum that's pretty common to use as a uh, trash barrel so. well we've got some more detail outside on over here yep yeah in the front we got these uh, fuel barrels thousand gallon and then the one two thousand gallon I went ahead and 3d printed those to try and get the correct um, pump on the top there so we've got some buckets yep buckets we got this would be the used oil bin here displayed on top to kind of funnel it and then the buckets out there to what they'd use to dump then ba and then further on down there, we got a couple steel racks. Those were built by Eric Peterson. And then uh, Dan Meyer did kind of the weathering on them a little bit. We like to have some steel laying around for any of those one-off projects that we need to do in the shop. Sure. So. And then uh, over here is this, uh, must be chemical tanks? Yep, and... kind of bulk chemical system. You can store water in there for the for the sprayer trailer or um, you know any starter fertilizer or anything like that. So you've got all the plumbing. Yep, we got the valves the plumbed in there and uh, banjo valves, got the yellow handle on them. So now in the yard, we've got another John Deere tractor and a blue jet uh, yep. anhydrous applicator. What uh, what model tractor is this? Uh, that's an A335R, it's built by Zeb Mueller. It's got his front 3D printed rims and then uh, Matt Cassidy's wheel weights on the back, spec cast tires, the newer ones on there. So then hooked to that, it's a 17 knife blue jet anhydrous machine, my brother. Designed that as well. It's got all the hoses and everything on it. Folds up nice and tight. Folds over. That was kind of a trick getting all the hoses run and everything to do that, but works pretty slick. That's very nice. And then and behind that's a double uh, double thousand gallon anhydrous trailer, so two thousand gallons on there. Kind of based off of BMB. And uh, those are getting to be more and more popular as the machines get bigger to be able to cover more acres. Or you know, fill up. Starting to see less and less of the single tanks. Yeah. Kind of look tiny these days with the bigger toolbars. And, and actually, you got some other tanks over here, the yep. older style tank. And yep, I do have the single tanks back here and another double. And then um, I got another Blue Jet piece here. Yep, this is a Blue Jet pivot track closer. So in Nebraska, we uh, use that after, after in the fall, after the pivot makes a number of circles throughout the summer to close up the tracks to keep the ruts out and we'll do that before we go in and hit it with the VT or disc or anything like that. Keeps the ground in good shape year after year. It's neat though. See how that's you know, even print the spiral pattern yep. in the back. And yep. It's pretty amazing what 3D printing will do and really opened up a lot of avenues there. Then it looks like a Landall 2511 inline ripper. Yep. Seven shank inline ripper printed in the folded position. I also have them in the unfolded, but uh, just works better that way to keep it nice and tight and clean. Well, it's great that you can even put the jack stands and you can see the cranks on it. And yep. Now this uh, generator here, is that something printed? or? Yep, this generator is an Ingersoll generator, 3D printed from uh, Model Mechanic on Shapeways. 
a pretty nice piece, that, and then also this uh, drive over hopper, they're both from him, both really nice pieces. Ramps fold down and everything, so. That's great. Yep, Th these are gonna be more and more common as well with semis really taking over and it's all about the time, right, to yeah. unload. And we've got some nice looking grain bins with the. Yeah. So these are standy grain bins, 42 grain bins with the tractor fab staircase on here. I tried to do kind of a lot of work to them to spruce them up a little bit. I 3D printed the lids for them, bin vents, uh, manhole cover, added some safety rings and uh, detailed the ladder a little bit. And I also added the stiffeners on them and the uh, retaining rings and then I 3D printed the doors and the unloading augers there to uh, add to that a little bit. And then on the back side, over here we got the grain bin drying fan from Jeff Hintz at Farm Factor 3D. Tried to go with that chain look, hanging off the bin instead of uh, uh, sitting on the pad outside. So. Nice. Then we've got another Landall tillage implement here. Yep, that's a 2410 uh, disc ripper. That's the seven shank model. Folds and unfolds, 3D printed. I designed this as well. And then, sit, sitting next to that, we got a Dagelman blade. Uh, we, we run one on the real farm, do a lot of dirt work with it. Um, don't have any cattle or anything like that, not for silage, but works really well finishing terraces after dozing and then pushing snow in the winter even. You yeah, open up a lot of roads with that. Neighbors really enjoy it too. And then up front, we got an 1150 Garfield scraper. So this is um, an 11 yard scraper. We have one of these on our farm as well. Something I've always wanted to have done and kind of before 3D printing it was going to be harder to do, but I think it turned out really well and just one of those pieces that kind of completes completes the farm. That's good. You can see you know, even some weeds coming up in the yep. fence row. And coming up in the fence row and try to get some good static grass down and show so, show some longer grass around the, where the equipment sits out every year. Sure, and you can see it's a little drier up by the gravel. Yeah. Um, one other implement here is a John Deere flail shredder. Yep. I was designed by Pierce Johnson and then finished by uh, Zeb Mueller. So it's just a nice, just another nice piece that we've been able to get through 3D printing. And we've got a very nice uh, spray trailer. And yep, so that's a Roadrunner sprayer trailer. Uh, those are made down in uh, Northwest Kansas. So this, this trailer was completely 3D printed as well. The tank, the frame, everything, and then everything on it just to give you kind of an idea what it looks like with the sprayer on there. Uh, all of the individual uh, inductors and everything were 3D printed. So this is a 60 gallon, then there's also a 30 gallon on there. Then we have a stainless steel inductor as well. The tank's a 3250, and this is kind of the standard tank that comes on their trailers. Uh, the, the tank was printed and painted flat black to kind of give it the plastic look, and then the bands are gloss black, and the, and the ladder and everything was all printed as one piece so it could just snap around the tank and into place. It's got chemical totes on it from Nick McRow and uh, tr in a pallet from Tractor Fab. Very nice. So then kind of moving over over behind the windbreak and I guess to the final part of the display. This is a uh, harvested soybean field from, uh, from the mind of Dan Meyer and kind of myself. We worked on it, kind of brainstormed it together and Dan was able to come down and help me out, get it together. We did his static grass technique that he's been using for wheat fields, and then we were able to use a blend of uh, Scenic Express, Super Leaf is what they call it. There's kind of three different colors that fit that fall fall color on there and put it on there to get that look. This would have obviously been cutted with a 30-foot head, so not able to, the combine's not spreading at the full 30 feet. So kind of the, the lines in there. And then up here behind, we got a uh, pivot motor. And uh, it's kind of common in our area to be, be run by a diesel generator. Pull the water up and we got the well head, power box, and then the fuel barrel there to run the motor. Very nice. And I, I like where you've got where the pickup truck parks. And yep. So coming in to check and even fuel up the fuel barrel, this is where the truck could pull in and kind of wear a rut, rut yeah. in the grass here. This is great year. that the soil looks crusted where you can see the water sat for a while and dried yep. out. Dried up. Pretty common in Nebraska. Not enough water. And then this here is a R4030 sprayer. Uh, this is something that I kind of put a lot of time into to detail up. I 3D printed the boom, ran the hoses through it and everything. On the back here, you can kind of see I painted each of the nozzles T-Jet colors to represent that. That's a 
very intricate work to uh, to paint those in. Yep, and you can see the hoses there, and then kind of up in front of the sprayer, I 3D printed the, the handrails on it and made a little kit for that that's up on Shapeways, and then uh, it's pretty common for guys to switch between floater tires and narrow tires, so these a uh, little bit wider floater tires will come off just uh, off the brass rod, and then the, the, the narrow tires are in the shed, and you just slip them on, and you got switched over for uh, post-emerge spraying in the spring. Oh, Folds up nice. and everything, and uh, turned out pretty well, I think. Well, thank you for the tour. I mean, it, it looks great, and I, I really want to highlight these uh, the bean stubble because I've never seen that done on a display before, and it just adds that nice detail, and we can see how it contours around the uh, irrigation pump. And thank you for the tour and bringing this out to the show. And yep, thanks a lot, Jason. Congratulations on third place. Thank it's you. a very competitive year. Yep. Thanks.